Hi everyone. So, I think I finally finished my CASA case, for the moment anyway. <laughs> it's become a project that's been longer than building the actual Milo. But as you can see, final electronics are done. Uh, you might have noticed a, a few changes since the last time I showed you what inside here. I've now gone for a 12 volt 10 amp DIN rail power supply over there, a mean well, and a 5 volt 10 amp over there, which means that is now powering the Raspberry Pi and the screen, the touchscreen, and the 12 volt power supply goes via a switch at the front, which is powering the lights inside. So I now have lights, although I'm not overly happy with the diffusers that I got. Um, I wanted white PET G, but I couldn't find any, as in I couldn't get any. So I had to go clear PET G, which doesn't obscure the actual LEDs as much. It looks a little bit better on camera than it does in real life because of the blowout, but I've got lighting all the way around. These two front ones are in red. I can't print them in black because my printer's dead. But these are all parts that I printed a while ago and I just hadn't had a chance to get them all in because I had to work out what I was doing for power. And of course, I've got the LED ring and that is all being powered off this switch, which is not plugged in yet because I was waiting till everything was was in but as you can see if I turn it off it's quite dark in there and when I turn it on it lights up heaps so that's all my lighting done all the cabling has been tidied up a little bit except for just in there I need to just cable tie that along here the LED stuff is all being secured and cable tied it looks like it's just kept on there but it's not it's actually secured and yeah it's working great the actual ring is now printed out of nylon so pa12 i didn't do carbon fiber nylon because i don't want to put carbon fiber through my printer it fits quite snug i had to like soft hammer it on place but then i've also got these m5 bolts one over there and one at the back and these actually go into insert nuts but the insert nuts are from the inside so when i tighten this up it can't pull the nut out and that's tightened into the spindle. So that is not coming off. Maybe not ever, <laughs> I don't know. And then this has been both glued, super glued and double-sided foam tape into place. That's not coming off either. So I now have lots of light in my workspace and I've got my touchscreen going. Although I have to say the Raspberry Pi touch support is terrible, really, really bad. On their latest uh, version of their operating system, whatever that's called now, their on-screen keyboard doesn't work. It's a known issue, it's never been resolved yet. I had to put uh, like a third-party terrible keyboard on. It does work, very ugly, whatever. There's some weird flashing happening sometimes. It doesn't happen if I boot into Ubuntu. I might just move this all over to Ubuntu instead. Uh, this is something weird going on. It's not a power issue, it's a display thing. But anyway, I've got all this working and as you can see, uh, it's homed. So I can actually move the Z axis. If I do uh, Z plus 25. Oh, can't see where I'm pushing. Uh, response, too long. I don't know what that means. Let me rehome the Z. Okay. But it's a web interface, it does work. I also got this, which is what I've been using to do some mods. Finally got myself a proper cold cutoff saw, although it's just a cheapie. It's a, a Vevor brand. Uh, I didn't realize that cold cutoff saws can go up to like two or $3,000. Uh, this was like a $400, or th no, $329 thing uh, directly from them. And it's actually pretty good. And so I've been cutting 2020 to be able to do mods to the Casa case, which I will show you in a moment, which I'm pretty excited about. And yeah, I can now finally cut aluminium and now use this same saw to cut my stock down. So my aluminium bars and stuff that I'm going to be milling come in 500 millimeter lengths, which is obviously too big to own the machine. So I need to be able to cut them down. So now I can, I've got a proper cold cut off saw to be able to do that. Although I don't know where it's going to live. A modification I just made to the Kaza case that I wanted to show you before I put all the screws back in and lock everything back up again 
it just looks like a normal back of the case right now. You can see that there are insert nuts everywhere waiting for the little brackets to go back in. But I added a door at the back so I could get access without just like having to remove a panel. So I get access to the back of the machine from a wiring point of view. I can get inside here to clean stuff out if I need to. And the door has got sealing rubber around it as well as on the actual frame and it sits inside and it maybe doesn't even need to be screwed down in place don't know uh, i haven't cut with it yet but it's pretty cool it fits nicely and whenever i need to i can open it up get inside i'm pretty happy with that hey everyone so i could possibly be doing my first aluminium cut first chips with aluminium in my finished casa yay peter's here with me hi peter hi everyone yeah, we're going to do this, I think. Hopefully probing the tool length. So I have no idea if any of the feed rates and spindle speeds and everything else is set right for this. It could be super conservative. We don't know, but it's going to hopefully make a plate uh, caution, spindle zero will now start. Here we go. And this could make a mess everywhere. Should we close the door over a bit? Oh, no way. Oh, here we go. Woo! First chips. So Peter sped it up by changing the speed factor. So yeah. Curious to see whether we are breaking in now. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Not the yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn the lights off. So we can see what's happening better. Maybe. I need two switches. One for the outside, one for the inside. Yeah. Lights on. Okay, here we go. It's going to be a big clearance one. Yeah, 1.5 million is a big one. That was way higher than 1.5. which I haven't attached yet to the compressor just to clear it we're uh, going too deep we haven't got the stock yet dead light or something so uh, look at that maybe it's a millimetre let's go a millimetre deep look a bit more what Thank you. 
Okay, so this is the first pass. Oh, bit shiny, focus. And we now have to do a contour, but we're a bit worried about the tab size and the, and the, the width of the stock, how close to the edge, and how, high, and how far down it's going through. So we're going to uh, self-tap these holes to hold this in place into the wood. So back in a moment. Okay, so we've just screwed it down just in case the tabs don't hold and uh, just probe the end mill, same, same end mill. So we're going to start the spindle and off we go. I never tightened them, clearly. Oh well.
set it to five millimeters for the 3d print that i was using before look at that first piece time to get it off so i did it first cut of aluminium so only my second cut on the machine and look at that i mean i didn't do a finishing pass on the outside still it's pretty good a little bit of chatter, you can see there. Honestly, this is superb. I uh, didn't do any uh, chamfers on it. I actually wanted to, I wanted to put a, a pass in, but that would have required a tool change. And I didn't want to do a, a tool change on this first attempt. I wanted to see if I could do the whole thing on the same end mill, which I did. And um, I'm glad that we did the screw down after we did the drilling which meant I didn't have to pull anything apart. So I did it in two passes, but it kept the same workspace, the work coordinates. So I didn't have to reprobe. So it actually turned out perfectly. Uh, I think I must have set up the job. I think my 3D model was five millimeters, not four, when I originally set it up for the 3D printing. And so when I transferred it over, I must have had it at five still, which is why it, it went deeper and the, uh, the tabs <laughs> went into the wood, but that's okay. Pretty happy with the result. So finally, finally, I am cutting metal on my mill. And it seems after all, I didn't assemble it badly because it did a good job. And those cut, the speeds and the, the depths were very conservative for the first time. Um, I know I'm going to end up breaking an end mill, many end mills, I, I get that, I know I will, but um, I'm glad that I didn't break one on the first attempt, but I can definitely go a bit more aggressive. I have two more of these to do anyway, I think on my second one I will try to put a um, chamfer on at least one side, the, the user facing side, but we'll see. I don't particularly want to do a two operation on it where I flip it over. But one day, one day I'll get to that. Maybe I will cut a jig that holds it so I can flip it. That'd be a good idea. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for giving me a like, because you're gonna give me a like, because this is worth a like, clearly. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And I am gonna do some cleanup. Uh, we did keep the doors open, which means there's a bit of aluminum on the floor. But I gotta say, this worked. Amazingly. Okay, bye everyone. Take care.